What is going on, everybody? It's Troop from Troop Talks here. And we are officially six weeks in to our NFL Week 6 picks and locks. And some unfortunate news. Colge has been added to the illness slash COVID list. Just like the Tennessee Titans. His return is questionable, but we do have his picks. And uh, he will not be in the studio today, unfortunately. So, everybody wish Colt well. He's on, he is on the COVID list. Yep, we wish uh, Colt a speedy recovery. Speedy recovery from the Rona. Anyway, in his place, you know, for the third week in a row, we got Wyatt in the building. Wyatt, it's good to see you, man. How you yeah, doing? Yeah, it is glad. I'm very glad to be back on Tree Talks. I'm talking like about another gracious, glorious week of the National Football League. I mean, I'm, I'm glad to have you here, and uh, I was excited. I was excited to find out that uh, you were the big winner of the football pools this week, you and Bryce. And, uh, yes, in our a uh, two of the last three weeks, in our local football poll, uh, which uh, has uh, over a hundred plus entries, uh, I took away took away first. Got the family streak going. You got the streak going. Three hundred dollars. Uh, I'm very place, baby. I'm very proud of you. And uh, before I introduce the rest of the uh, the rest of the squad, just a quick little debate that I want to get in uh, pre podcast before we jump into it. We had a little discussion earlier about candy variety packs, and I want to let everybody know in the comment section below if you had a choice between a candy variety pack of the chocolate pack with the Hershey's and the Reese's and the Kit Kats. Or the nerds. All right, I gotta pull it up here. All oh, right, so we yes. really have. All right, listen, I gotta take the reins. All right, take the statistics. All right, me. so so for the people listening at home, this is in the comment section. Write it down. Would you rather have Reese's, Kit Kat, the four four squares of uh, Hershey's, an almond joy, or would you rather have Laffy Taffy? Sweet Tarts, Nerds, or Gobstoppers. I know what I'm picking. I'm picking. I'm picking the the latter of the two. And I think you're a fucking psychopath. There's absolutely no way. I, I think that's that. the best pack, dude. The chocolate pack is not the way to go. You want to go with the you want to go with the Laffy Taffy, the Gobstoppers, the Nerds, and well, the Sweet Tarts. Well, I guess we'll find out what the people say in the comment section. I know Ooh. Brett Fitz is a man of culture. I know he would choose the chocolate variety pack, but I also know he's in the studio for sure. How are you doing? Chocolate's Fitz? out of fashion. Chocolate's I am fashion. doing really good. You know, we're just glad to be here. We're glad the family streak has rolled wild over the past three weeks. Uh, all three brothers have won some sort of money and through the thing, so that's that's good. I'm glad, and I'm hoping the rest of the family gets going. So. That's good. And uh, I would not take the chocolate variety pack. I am also on the Laffy Taffy Gobstopper train. I don't like Almond Joys. They're okay, well, out. the That's Almond, so the Almond Joys And takes... then the Hershey's is too, I, it's too much chocolate for me. Reese's is elite. Don't get me wrong. Kit Kats are elite. See, they don't carry that whole pack for me. But Gobstoppers, they're good. Sweet Tarts, they're always good. Nerds, can't go wrong every once in a while. And then, on top of that, then you just throw in Laffy Taffy, and that's a classic. See, to me, you guys are throwing a bunch of mediocre candy in one sack to compare to two elite candy bars. Anyway, speaking of elite people, we got Cam in the building. Cam, how you doing, brother? Uh, you know, wishing I had my car. You know, I wish you had your car, too, because we would have uh, avoided a situation <laughs> yesterday. Obviously, uh, clearly not your fault, but obviously... Uh, we would have avoided... For a couple, for a time being, for yeah. another couple days, you know, it would it would it would it would have delayed the inevitable destruction of uh, the old Nissan uh, Maxima that your boy's been driving around. Um, Why was clutching that one too? Why picked us up? Absolutely, absolutely. Anything to help my boys in a situation crisis need. Uh, whatever I can do for them, I will always be there for them. That is my job. That is why God put me on this earth. We're here to help my boys. We, and, and we appreciate that. Cam, also, you didn't get to watch the Patriots play this week, and that kind of fucked you in fantasy, bro. Yeah, it did. How, it now, did. how upset did that make you this week, and how bad How bad did it fuck you overall in fantasy? No, I knew I was going to lose, but it made me lost by a lot more than I was expecting to lose by. So I was just like, fuck, 
I'm fucked. So you so you kind of went in with the expectation that you were gonna lose before you even. Oh yeah, I knew 100 percent I was gonna lose. The the mind the mindset wasn't I mean, there for you. His teams were his team is this team was just stacked better than mine. I was like, my players haven't been producing for the past couple weeks, so I'm like, I'm fucked. Well, that's the way it goes. And before we get into the most epic part of the week, the point reveal. I want to get your take on the uh, candy variety pack situation. Which which pack are you taking? Oh, uh, yes. I'd love to know. The one with Reese's in it. Yeah, candy see, packs. that is just almost Ooh, the so most obvious two choice. Two chocolate, two, two uh, I it's guess. It's just because of those two sweet. elite candy bars, though. Like, if you're talking, if you want a variety pack, <laughs> we're talking chocolate. a variety pack here. Yeah, I, I would rather, guys rather, I'd rather guys go with the four. The there's a four chocolate, pack with sweet, Reese's sour. cups. There's a four pack with the Reese's cups, brother. We're talking variety. Yeah, yeah that is What's a variety pack. Candy? We're talking about like the variety par- pack that we have in the living room as yeah. opposed to the variety oh. pack with the gobstoppers and the Laffy Taffy. Oh, I don't even know about that. I thought we were just talking about just in general. No. But yeah, no, the Reese's for sure. Yeah. Ugh. You got you got I would go if it was a whole bag of Reese's. I get that, but no. Oh, yeah. Well, that, uh, we got a 2-2 two, two tie here, so everybody in the comments section, drop it down below. Let's. What's your favorite candy? What, what is it? What's the better of the two? Let's, let's, settle, let's settle this ever-so-heated uh, debate here. All right, now it is time for the most epic part of the week. Now, before we dive into this week... We're already heated. We haven't done picture yet. <laughs> yeah. My God. Already getting heated in the studio. I want to... I just need to kind of address. I know Cameron was in first place last week. Who was in second between you and Me and Colds were tied. No, you and Colds were tied. We continued to be tied after we both got seven last week. All right, so I will go first. I had another, thanks to the Miami Dolphins. I would have got only eight points, but thank God for my upset, getting me those extra two points to get... 10 points, so we're on back-to-back double-digit weeks, and we are finally in the 40s, ladies and gentlemen. 43 points for your boy, and I couldn't be any more excited. We're on the slow come-up. We're, we're building our way back, building our way back into the race. Now we're going to just go over to Colge. Colge had a slow week. Colge... Got his upset. I mean, Cold got his lock and missed his upset for a total of seven points this week. Ooh, another seven point week. With a score now of 45 points. So I am only two points behind Cold right now. Wow. So we are we are in a race to not be in last place. I'm uh, ways above him. <laughs> I am I'm very I'm very, very excited for that. Fitz, why don't you reveal your score? Well, you know, if Min- if Minnesota would have just held out against <laughs> Seattle, we would have just got two more points. But, of course, the Vikings got, you know, let Seattle come back. Russell scored three touchdowns in seven minutes in the third quarter. Um, that was just awful to watch. But I missed that, but I got a total of nine points. I locked the Ravens. They stomped yep, the Bengals like we thought. And uh, unfortunately, I missed my upset with the Vikings, but that's all right. We still got nine points, and I'm at 48 now for the season, so that's not bad. Not bad. Drake's creeping his way up. You are creeping your way back. I mean, these, these uh, not double digit uh, point weeks for me, it's kind of just allowing everybody to come back. Me and Colts both got sevens, and that's just kind of wild. See, now I'm, I'm getting really excited for Colgen, Colgen Fitz's points because I think as of right now, it's kind of. You know, the the main race right now is kind of just the race for second place. Yeah. So that's why that's why I'm kind of just waiting to see how well Cam did because I I don't, I don't really care. You know, <laughs> I don't really care. You know, it is what it is. So Cam, why don't you why don't you tell the people uh, how many points you got this week? And you know, you would have only gotten a single digit points this week. Would have. But with the upset with the Raiders, oh yeah, because I knew the Raiders were gonna beat the Chiefs yeah. because the Raiders gave the Patriots a fucking run for our money, and we gave the Chiefs a run for our money without Cam Newton. So I had a feeling 
that's an upset waiting to happen next week. I just had a feeling they're too high in their head. They beat the Patriots without their starting quarterback. The thing with me, Cam, is that game to me wasn't even upset. I knew the Raiders were going to come out and completely decimate the Chiefs. It was, just, it was just undeniable. So I came in with 10 points with 58 altogether, ladies and gentlemen. With last week, I had 48, but now I got 58. 58. So Cam- ah! Cameron. Miraculous. 58. That's a 10 point lead on everybody out. At least a 10 point lead. That's wild. A 10 point I'm going to make it back, though, because I trust myself. I know how good I can do it, and I always rally. Better hope I have some bad weeks coming up, baby. It's. it's I got it. I'm doing good. Woo! It, it's, been, it's been an impeccable season by camera. It's been, it's been fun to watch. It's been fun to watch. Why? Do you know how many how many games did you get right in your weekly this week? Do you know how many points you Ooh. might have got this week? He only uh, missed two. I only missed two. Really. Yeah, the one that he won, only missed two. I missed. Uh, I picked Tampa Bay out of the Bears, and then I, I uh, let's see, I picked uh, Buffalo tonight. Or this, impressive. This that was the only two he missed. He, he he probably got first in that poll by a good margin. Yeah. Well, he beat me. Yeah, that was... Yeah, he had a, quite the week. He picked the Raiders over the Chiefs and the Dolphins to just destroy the... Yeah, he did. He just knew. Yeah, just I do knew. I remember that. Dude, I knew the Finns were going to go crazy. White I did too. Both. White had two polls last week, and he picked both Dolphins. He did not split that game. He said, no, Fitzmagic's going to run wild. And I uh, he did. I would be lying to you if I didn't say I put in a waiver claim. For Ryan Fitzpatrick this week, <laughs> he's so good. I mean, he, he's he's the seventh ranked yeah, fantasy he's had quarterback. Good so I mean, and that's why like Tua, you almost can't have him come in because he's kept them competitive and he's won games for that team. So it's kind Ryan, of wild. Ryan Fitzpatrick always fun to watch. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to start diving in to our week number six games, and we're going to kick off with a game that should have been on last week, but is going to be on this week instead, the damn Rona. We're going to have Larry kick this one off. we got the Broncos, we got the Patriots. Larry, what do you got? I'm taking the Patriots. I, You know, I like the Broncos. I hope that they the this bye week kind of helped them get healthy again. I know Noah Font's struggling with stuff. I know Drew Locke was struggling with stuff. But I'm taking the Patriots just because I, this team's too good. The, their offense is not going to be able to keep up. Uh, the Patriots are going to win by a lot. Cam's going to come out have, I think he's going to have two rushing touchdowns. This will be his first one ever 100-yard rushing performance with the Patriots this week. That's my bold take. The Patriots win. Bold take of the week, getting them out of the way early. Wyatt, what do you got? Ooh, uh, I'm also going with the uh, uh, Patriots. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be with uh, their boy, you know, their, uh, their boy Cam or... Cam or no Cam? No Cam will be in. He okay. Will be. Yeah, he'll be All right, in. so it's it'll be a, it's the, the, there was never any doubt anyway, regardless. But it's always glad to see Cam back in the pocket, uh, throwing deep passes. Yeah. And uh, we'll be seeing a lot of that against Denver. All right, we got Cam. Cam, what do you got? You know, this is a no-brainer for me. You know I'm choosing the Patriots on this one. When Bryce said that Cam was going to get 100 yards, two touchdowns, I was thinking. Yeah, if this is it, if it's gonna happen early in the season, this is definitely be the team that's gonna happen to the Broncos defense without Von Miller. They are just trash. Their defense is they no thrashed. Run, they it got is no. Thrashed. They have no run game. No no run defense. Jarrell like, Casey went down for injury. They traded for him from the Titans. He was yeah, a good All Pro player. They but don't he's have out run for defense, the year. So that's just an easy no brainer for the Patriots, and I'm pretty sure this is gonna be an easy star frame for all of us. And the Patriots are a team that, with Cam Newton, is a team that I like to root for. And it, it's funny. It's funny how uh, how different this Patriots team is to me. Uh, without Tom Brady, because I think with Tom Brady, it was a team that was a little bit um, harder to root for. But when the Patriots play now, it seems as though it makes it easier to root for them. And with that, that does mean we're going to be getting a... Star Frame! Five dollars of charity of your choice. And would you believe me if I said this is the third straight week 
that we have opened up a Pix video with a star frame. I can believe that, yeah. Third straight week, and that brings the total... Last week we were completely wrong, though. <laughs> but hey. Mm, well. <laughs> this this brings the total to 32 star frames. That's wild. On the year, and that's kind of why I started rambling, because I was trying to find the total. 32 star frames to open up the season. Coming up next, we got an AFC South battle between the Houston Texans and the Tennessee Titans. The Titans just got playing as we are recording this one. Why who you got in this one? Ooh, uh, to be honest, I really want to want to pick the Texans, but I don't think I can realistically after that dog game that the, the Titans have just had. So I think I'm gonna have to ride with the Titans, despite right. me hating them both because they're in my division. Hey, I'm right with I'm right there with you, homie. Bryce, who do you got? Uh, well, I already used the Texans as an upset earlier in the year, yeah. but I think this is going to be won by the Texans. I'm not going to use, I can't use the upset, so I'm mm-hmm. going just straight up Texans. I think Romeo Cornell is going to get this team rallying back. I think if they can get a couple wins rallied off here, they might come back to being relevant, maybe even be in contention for the division. I like this team. I think Watson can make plays. I think David Johnson looks good. I think it's going to be a barn burner game, but I think the Texans win for Romeo Cornell. You know, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars are the first team to lose to three straight winless teams in NFL history. That's just brutal. Congratulations. <laughs> that is the most Jacksonville Jaguar thing. The Jaguars are always every team's get right game. And I think this is exactly what the Houston Texans needed. Brandon Cooks and Deshaun Watson finally built that chemistry. David Johnson got close to his first 100-yard game since being an Arizona Cardinal. And I think Houston is going to beat Tennessee. Even though Tennessee looked really good this week, I hate to admit it. And I think it's about time, you know, more people other than the people of the crew AF start talking about how good Ryan Tannehill is. Because Ryan Tannehill is an absolute dog. Not disrespecting Derrick Henry because obviously he gets a workload, but... Ryan Tannehill's a dog, and that's why I'm going to choose Houston as my upset of the week. I have not used Houston yet. Might as well use them now before they're not above 500. Cameron, who do you got? You know, these are very compelling points that you guys have been putting down. It makes me still want to choose the Titans, but at the same time, when you choose, the, when you said the upset against the Texans, that made me think. I'm going to get a 14-point lead this week, boys and girls. So I'm going to have to go with the upset again with Trevin. Oh. So you're going to take Houston? I'm going to take Houston with the upset. Ooh, we all t- have Houston except for Wyatt. Wyatt, Wyatt his first per- the star Wyatt's frame. first per- you know, Hey, star I frame. wanted to roll Texans. I don't, I'm not entirely sure why you guys are super-duper-duper-duper-duper duper, duper, duper high on the Texans, but... Just don't forget, we just did believe. miss a Monday night game. There, there's two Monday night games, and we'll, we'll, Monday night's at the end of the game. At the end of the... At yeah, the but the, the Chiefs, game. you chose the Chiefs and the Bills. No, the Chiefs and the Bills are at the end, because that's Monday. These yeah, are the two. Sunday's games. Yeah. And the, yeah, there's two Monday nights. I got them on the, oh. I got them on the sheet oh, right okay. here. You yeah, just, yeah, I just don't understand why you just don't do Monday, Monday, and then Sunday. Because you always because do Sun- Sunday before Monday. Because <laughs> Sunday comes in the week before Monday. All the games come before. <laughs> well, so well, why would you do the Chiefs game then so early? We did, the, we did do game. the Chiefs game. We talked about the Texans and Titans right there. And we did the Broncos and the, and the Broncos Patriots before that. Oh, yeah. Are you in? Are you in? I was just before the. He's on Mars, folks. He's on Mars. I talked to you about a Patrick Mahomes trade earlier in the day, and now you're. That must have, He's on Mars. That, that's a another planet. But that's we're a clip. Back. That's a clip. That's a clip for the end of the year slideshow for the picks. Nope. <laughs> we got we got plenty more uh, precast ones for that. So stay tuned for that at the end of the year. Coming up next, we got the Browns and the Steelers, and you know Bryce, I feel like. Or Larry, sorry, I can't call you Bryce in the podcast. People won't know. Who yeah, I'm about. <laughs> come on, now. Larry. You know people. Especially you gave me a little a little flack. Not to say the NFC West isn't tough, because it is. It's still probably the toughest division in football. But when I would say that the AFC North gives you a run for your money, you kind of scoffed at me, but look at the AFC North right now. This is probably right up there with the NFC West, man. They're toe-to-toe. They're the best the division in the AFC. The only reason I scoffed 
at you for tell this. Tell. For this reason only was because this division doesn't bring home Super Bowl titles. That's fair. Our division does all the time and has in recent history. Hey, our division brings them home Super Bowl titles. <laughs> we got six, at least. Hey, that's, that's New England holding it down for the AFC East. Probably got the most, honestly. I do. So, but I'm I'm saying that I had thought heading into this year the AFC North was going to be the best division of football, and I mean Cleveland's putting it on with what they got. I mean they're they're play calling excellent for what they have. They're not make they're kind of hiding Baker Way, Baker Mayfield's uh, mistakes. Mistakes, and when he does make mistakes, though they are ugly. And I, I would like to see Baker kind of take a step up this week against Pittsburgh. Unfortunately, I don't think it's a big enough step up for them to beat Pittsburgh. And I think the uh, the Cleveland hype train kind of ends here in, in Pittsburgh. Continues the dominance that they're on, man. I like the chemistry that uh, Big Ben's building with all these young receivers, and I think he gets it done. Larry, what do you like? I, I'm going – I'm with you on this one. I'm taking the Steelers. I just think their team's all around there, obviously. That defensive – that if there's any defense that's not the Colts, the de- that Colts was a number one run defense. But if there's any defense that's close to that, it would be the Steelers. And I think they could stop the Browns run game. I If you expect Baker to beat the Steelers, I don't expect him to beat the Steelers. Uh, Claypool and Big Ben worked up hella chemistry last week. They had four TDs together. I think that's – he's probably going to be the rookie of the year this year just based off of – I think he's got it hooked up with Big Ben. Uh, I like James Conner, too. I don't think the Browns' defense is going to be put together. I've been burnt too many times by the Browns to pick them in games like this. I could see them beating them, but I just don't think it'll happen. I'm taking the Steelers. All right, and uh, Cam, who do you got? You know, I'm going to have to go with the Steelers on this, but, I mean, it's kind of hard to not go with the Steelers. But, I mean, like, if you look at their first three weeks – they played the Giants. I mean, they played the Giants, the Broncos, and the Texans. All those teams were very bad. And then they had a bye week. And then they played the Eagles. All four teams that they played, very bad teams. So this team, again, they all had bad quarterbacks. This is another bad quarterback. This defense is going to eat him up. Steelers with a lock. All right. And Wyatt, who do you got? Ooh, uh, I'm also going to have to go with uh, Steel City. Go with Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, and that is going to be our second star frame. Five dollars a charity of your choice. And right now, I just realized I'm a terrible, terrible twice. friend. That's what I'm thinking. I am a terrible, terrible friend. And yeah, you are. And just to just to clarify here, Cole also picked the Steelers, and his bold prediction of the week is James Conner has his best rushing game against the Browns. So Ooh. through his best, his best take. Or his uh, take there. And Colge is on Wyatt's side with the Titans. And not only is he on Wyatt's side with the Titans, Colge is going to lock the Tennessee Titans. So he's going to go completely opposite of what me and Cameron are doing. He will lock Houston. So me and Cameron are either in for two points, or Colch is in for minus one in that game. That is going to be a huge game for the leaderboards this week. And I almost Conference. wish I didn't use my upset on Texans earlier in the season because I was on board. I also <laughs> took the Texans, but I'm only going to hopefully get one point this week. And the Patriots and the uh, Broncos, he also takes the Patriots, so that is going to wrap up the star frame as well. So, the, uh, the the two star frames were very obvious, I guess. You know, Pittsburgh and Cleveland, I think, still has some potential. I think it's going to be a good game. Yeah, I, I think do too. Cleveland has all the potential to win the game. Yeah. I just don't think it will happen. And now the, the, the best, you know, question of the week is, does Barn leave the group chat? I don't think so. Well, I think Barn reluctantly stays in the group chat, but I think he might just turn off his phone. I think Barnes. Bitterly. I think Barnes stays in the group chat because I think the only buddy that will be pushing his buttons will be Mike. I don't see Colton coming after him, so uh, Barnes gonna stay in, but he will be very angry. Cameron and or out of the group chat. He's in, but he's muting us. He's in, but a mute. I, I like that. That's a very, it's a very, very safe pick. It's mild take. <laughs> 
Anyway, coming up next, we got the Ravens and the Eagles, man. Carson Wentz every year. You kind of wish the best for the kid, but doesn't end up shining. Cameron, I want you to go first on this one. What do you got? You know, I really want to choose the the Eagles on this one. I really do. I feel like this could be a good week for him. And I feel like this, I don't know, I, I just have a feeling that this could be them that's going to beat the Ravens, going to make the Ravens go 4-2. But at the same time, the Ravens are they are still looking real good. So I'm going to have to go with the Ravens on this one. All right, Fitz, what do you got? I'm taking the Ravens. Uh, I liked what the Eagles did last week against the Steelers. They put up a really good fight. They stopped James Conner to, uh, I think he had 15 carries for 44 yards on the ground. After two, Clayus, the it, Clayus effect. Yeah, after two 100-yard games. So um, I, I think the Eagles are... Uh, they're decent. I just don't think they're going to do it. And Jake Elliott missed a 57-yard field goal to go up against the Steelers to put the heat on them. Mm-hmm. I right. think the Ravens got it. The Ravens are going to lock it down. Ravens, by a lot. I am also going to go with Baltimore. Not by a lot. 24-10. Civil score. Yeah. Two touchdowns. I think win. Mark Andrews has a hat trick for Ooh. touchdowns. There we go. This is the kind of content we like. Why? what do you got? Ooh, uh... This one of Philly's special. <laughs> the Ravens. All right. Yeah. Ravens run wild. And what does Colge got? Colge, in back-to-back specialty picks, will choose the Eagles to ruin the star frame for his upset of the week. Ooh. Colge is trying to give up his spot. He didn't man. ruin any other star frames, did he? <laughs> no. He hasn't. Oh, yeah, he did ruin it. You know why he did? Oh, yeah, no, yeah, Wyatt ruined the other star frame. Look at that, dude. I mean, the Eagles, man, I mean, we're kind of of running slim pickings on picks already, so, I mean, you know, this is about about time where you're going to have to use some some picks like that. Yeah, that's very true. Coming up next, we got an NFC East battle, and everybody talks about this division. It's the worst division in football. There's no no debate about that. But, uh, it's also really fun. It's really fun. Before you continue the, the conversation right now, the next three games, the next six teams, guess how many wins altogether they have. What is that? Four. Four teams, four wins. No, six teams, four wins. That is a great stat. And they're all one and four or zero and five. Cameron, this is that was a very good statistic that you just pulled out. And this so is why think about how all these shitty games are gonna be. Think about how hard these games are gonna be to pick. And you think you think about the the one win games that are like hard to pick. I mean, like the next game that we'll pick after this one and this game are both really really hard games to pick. I mean, this NFC East game, it's fun. We got the Washington Football Team. We got the New York Football Giants. What in the world is gonna give here? Bryce, make some sense out of this one. Well, I'm taking the Giants. Uh, I like Washington. I don't like Kyle Allen running the offense. I think that's what's going to do the do them demise. I think Ron Rivera is going to keep him in for the whole first half, and it's going to ruin this team. I think Daniel Jones eats him up the first half of the game. I think I think this is going to be Devontae Freeman's first 100-yard rushing game for the New York Giants. And I think the Giants get it done. Fair enough. Cam, what do you got? You know, I'm honestly going to think that Alex Smith is going to be in by the end of this, by the end of the first quarter. Second quarter, he's in. Not by half, he's in by second quarter. So that really makes me want to choose the Redskins, the Washington team on this, but I know they're not going to get the dub and Freeman is just going to go off, so I'm going to have to go with the Giants with Bryce. Devontae Freeman, man, that's a bat that I, you know, when you look at how he was a free agent, that's a bat that deserved to be on the team, man. Wyatt, who do you got? I like to move it, move it. You like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. You like to move it. I'm going with the New York Giants. Uh, King Julian picked the New York Giants. I'm picking the New York Giants. Picking Daniel Jones, he's going to lob it up. Going to get many, many muchos touchdowns. And that's just the way it's going to be. Colge went with the Washington football team. To prevent 
a star frame. frame. And I am also going to take the Washington football team. Ooh. You think Alex Smith For is going to be For the exact reason Cam said. Yep. I think Alex Smith comes in in the second quarter. I can see it. And he, you know, he has a coming out party, right? This is, this is, this is the game you're going to do it against, right? This is a team that you're not that much better than. You're not that much worse than. It's a division rival game. Alex Smith hasn't played in a full year. And this is a guy that... And he didn't look too bad in the last couple of minutes of when he played last week. He didn't look bad. He just got ate up by Aaron Donald. I mean, yeah. what can you do? The guy had four and the sacks. Giants doesn't, the Giants don't have that great of a oh. pass rush. Mm. So, I mean, Alex Smith, man, this is going to be an emotional moment. Alex Smith comes back. He gets a win. I'm not saying he gets a lot of wins and when he comes when back. And that's when he gets his starting job back. He gets his job back. He wins. And it's a it's a beautiful moment. And Washington's back in the race, wild card. Well, they might win that division. The division. That division's bad. I mean, Cam Cam's fucking hyping up Alex Smith, man, and still pick the Giants. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Cole's gonna go bold and uh, go along with Alex Smith having a big day. Coming up next, we got the Falcons. And the Vikings. The Falcons just fired Dan Quinn and their GM. Wyatt, Both. who do you got? Ooh, I got the Vikings for no particular reason. I'm just going with the Vikings. Going to go with school. Going to think they're going to pillage the village. And uh, that's all i got to say about that. Uh, Colge agrees with you. He thinks the Vikings are going to pillage the village as well. And he has the Vikings beat the Falcons. Fitz, what do you got? I'm taking the Vikings over the Falcons because I think this is a must-win game for Mike Zimmer. I think if Mike Zimmer loses this game to the Falcons, he's fired as the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, I think this is a big, big win. Dalvin Cook is not going to play, supposedly, but uh, Anthony Madison, their backup, played in his wake last week. He played, he had, he played exceptional. Yeah, he had 20 carries for 112 yards, so... I, I just think this Vikings team's going to get it done. They need to win. They've been playing hard against teams like the Seahawks. They're going to bounce back, and this is the team they bounce back against. I'm also going to say that the Vikings bounce back, and, you know, the Falcons, man, who would have thought 0-6? Cam, who do you got? You know, it sucks. Who does? No donations today. So I'm going to go with the Falcons, getting the first dub. Another star frame prevention. What do you like about the Falcons in this one? I don't know. I just feel like if Matt Ryan does not do good, if he does not start playing well, Julio is going to go bye-bye. He's going to lose his job, and they're going to go into rebuild mode, which they kind of already are, but it's for sure rebuild state. So this is for sure going to make or break his career, and this is going to make or break whether Julio stays or goes. So I'm honestly feeling the Falcons are going to get the dub. There is a lot riding on this Atlanta Falcons franchise, that's for sure. Coming up next, we got the Detroit Lions and the Jacksonville Jaguars. I want to go with Colge first, because Colge took Detroit, and right next to it he said, sorry, Dream. So, you know, I, I, the Jags, you know, they were tanking. They always were. It's unfortunate. But uh, Wyatt, who do you got? Uh, I, I have the same sent, sentiment uh, as uh, Cold, Cold does. Uh, I, I'm sorry to tell you this, Travis. You know, uh, Jags put up a hell of a fight. They are, they are a decent football team, but they're young, inexperienced. And uh, I feel like if uh, Stafford doesn't kill you, uh, Prater's gonna. Prater's gonna. So, uh, you know. Uh, Fair. So, it's the Lions. That's a good point. Cam, what do you got? He said it all for me. Lions, I'm gonna have to go with it. That's an easy uh, no brainer right there. Alright, Fitz, what do you got? I think the Jags defense is much like the Cardinals. We're just a shell. We're just out there. We make some stops every once in a while. But most of the time, we're giving up lots of yards, ground and through the air. So I think the Lions are going to eat you up this week. I think AP's going to have 100. 
I think Kenny you Galladay. You always think eight. Yeah, no yeah, shit. Sure. I think. We're talking Come about on. a guy. Like, every week, right? This, this is literally no, the you sixth this, week. Guys, in you say the same thing. Guys, you you say this every week. Guys, you, you try and stop you, and then you're like, guys, no, 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 no stop. This, but he goes like this, this, and like, you're a beast. He's an old man. Like, you like, you it's, know, it's, it's literally. It's literally. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. It's literally Adrian Peterson has 100 yards or. Frank Gore's no. gonna average four yards carry. Frank Gore's the starter now. <laughs> I know, but that's that's, Frank literally, Gore's the that's starter. literally your statement. The guy wouldn't game. get the starter wouldn't get released if Gore wasn't doing enough to get the job. <laughs> <laughs> it's because he's and bad. Guess what? They're both bad. And I don't like to be attacked, Cameron. By the way, <laughs> <'Cause guess what? laughs> it's not that I like every per every AP every week. It's that the Jags defense gives up. Every 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 week, a oh, hundred yards to whoever any receiver, Mixon, any running back, anybody. Mixon had forty two and a half fantasy points two weeks ago against the Jaguars. That Come doesn't on. happen, and he's he's been a bad back the whole year until the Jaguars play him. Come on, Adrian Peterson. <laughs> Come on, dude. Adrian Joe Peterson Mixon's is bad. going to have a hundred yards. Matthew Stafford's going to throw four TDs. Kenny Galladay is going to have two of them. I think for 100 I hope yards, plays at least. and I think it's gonna be a blowout. I'm sorry, Jack. <laughs> I I'm love sorry. Gardner, but it's a tragedy. And it's just like your defense. Well, I think it's down to you, Treve. Well, this is gonna be a very unfortunate. Just fucking kidding. The Jags are gonna fucking pull it out. Dude. I don't even care, bro. Just change your dude, mind. Dude, the quick. thing, the thing is, is that like, oh, I love. Love the Jags, right? I hate the team. I hate the Jaguars. Love them. There's so many players I love. I hate the fucking organization. I hate the owner. I hate the GM. I hate the head coach. I hate the defense coordinator. I like Jake Gruden. But, like, this is going to be a fucking shootout. I'm talking, like, 35 45. Like, we could lose by 10, win by 10. It don't matter. You guys are going to get ran through. But I'm going to say this. My bold prediction, Gardner Minshew throws a career high, and Matthew Stafford... Career high in interceptions? Career high in yards. And Matthew Stafford and Gardner Minshew combined for 900 passing yards. But when Gardner goes over 300, he has the infamous line of losing... I'm going to say he breaks and... that this week against Detroit. Uh, Gardner Minshew is going to get a career high and high ankle sprains. Oh, I don't want Mike Glennon. Oh? No, Mike nobody. Glennon. Nobody. I like Mike Glennon. Nobody should guy. want Mike Glennon. Fucking ass. So that, that was, was another bad. another star frame preventer. I, I had to do it for, for the boys. We're just trying to save money on that charity at this point. <laughs> They're on to us. Right now we got the Bengals... And the Colts. Wyatt, why don't you go first? Uh, I'm going to have to go with the Colts. Uh, despite us being a shell of our former self, the Indianapolis Colts, we are not on the shit-ass, dog-ass, piss-ass, trash-ass level of the Bengals. We are better than that. They are they're what we like to call jabronis. We are, like, <laughs> we are mid-card. Colts are mid-card. We're not there yet. We're not upper echelon. We're not the best team in the west side of the Mississippi or the east side of the Mississippi. You're not um, even the Mississippi. We're, we're not even close to the Mississippi. Well, we're kind of close to the Mississippi, but not as close as some of the other teams. And, well, you know. That are near Mississippi. It, it's tough. Uh, but, yep, yeah, we're, we're going to gonna have to go with the Colts. Going to have to go with my boy, Philip Rivers. My homeboys. I like it. I like it. And Cam Stonzo. All the good guys. No. <laughs> I really want to cho choose Joe Burrow. But I'm I'm not liking what he's putting up. So I'm going to have to go with the Colts on this one. Uh, Colts picked the Colts as well. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to put a dagger in your guys' star frame plans here with the Colts. I'm going to take Cincinnati. You see, you're doing this on purpose now, I think. No, no, I'm not, dude. This is a hard week, man. You look at the schedule. I think there's... There's a ton of games, man, that can go either way this week. I think there's there's a lot. This is gonna This should be my lock. This is this is a uh I think as far as the lead goes between me and Bryce and Colge for that second place slot, I think this is kinda gonna be, you know, a week where 
it's going to be tough. And I think this is one of those games that I have to pick as an outlier here, and I'm going to take Cincinnati. Joe Burrow is a good quarterback. Joe Burrow is everything that Cincinnati hoped he'd be. Joe Mixon, though he didn't get a lot of rushing yards, he got a lot of volume. And I think Indianapolis' rush defense is not that great. I've seen freaking running backs do really well. I mean, you look at Cleveland, even though Cleveland is a great rushing attack, you look at teams like Jacksonville. I mean, that was James Robinson's first week. And then you look at every other team they faced. I mean, they're, they're a bottom-tier run defense. Joe Mixon is going to play well. Joe Mixon is going to play fast. He's going to play good. Joe Burrow's already built chemistry well with guys like Tyler Eifert, James Sample, that tight end that he has. I mean, no one's even heard of him, and he has played James really Sample. well. Yeah, pretty good. Really well. Not James Sample. He's an old safety for the yeah, Jets. Yeah, Drew Sample. He's yeah. an old safety He's, for the Jets. And Jags. he said Eifert there for a second, but that's last season. Eifert plays for the Jags yeah. also. I, I have the Jags on my mind from the last pick. Yeah. But, you know, freaking Drew Sample, he's he's putting together really good connections with a lot of Bengals players right now. And I'm buying into Cincinnati, and I'm buying into what they're selling. So I'm picking Cincinnati over Andy. Bryce, who do you got? Well, Trude, I think you're talking a lot of sense. I'm going with the Bengals as well. I I like what Burrow's doing. I know it was the Ravens, but the Ravens, is that team's just built. They have two good CBs. they got great a great defensive line. they got everything there. I just think that this Bengals team has got what it's, it needs to do. Joe Burrow has played good in every other game that was not the Ravens game. I think he's going to do extremely well with Mixon. I like that he's hooking it up with T. Higgins now for a lot of receptions. I like that he's getting Tyler Boyd involved. Uh, Mixon's starting to get more totes. He had, thirty, I think, 30 touches last week in the offense. Uh, and I think he's going to make a big, big-time play against the Colts to get them the lead. I think it's going to be a Mixon 58-yard slasher. For the touchdown lead, and Bullock might have to come <laughs> in to hit a game-winning field goal. Hey man, he's but the Bengals get her done. He, he's up for a comeback player of the year. Oh yeah, man. cramp man, that cramp got him good in week one. Coming up next, we got the Bears and the Panthers. This is a game that I also think is very close. So I'm gonna have the first place champ, ten points in the lead, kick this one off. Champ, who do you got? You know, this was a really tough choice for me. Um, I'm really liking what the Panthers are starting to do. Um, they're, they're picking it up in the pace, even without McCaffrey in it. They're still doing pretty good. Um, but at the same time, the Bears, dude, they not going to lie, they are looking pretty good. They're looking nice. I mean, they David are, Montgomery's getting involved. He's looking yeah, good. they are looking pretty good. Whether Trubisky's there or Nick Foles is there, they're, they're looking pretty good, and I'm liking it. So I'm going to have to go with the Bears on this one there. You know, I think I think the Bears are destined to fall off sometime. And who better to do it than Teddy freaking Bongwater? Does this podcast love any two quarterbacks more than Ryan Tannehill and Teddy Bongwater? <laughs> I, think, I think that we are the certified biggest Ryan Tannehill and Teddy Bridgewater fans in the entire world. And I'm going to... I'm going to make that ring true here. I think they play well, and they they get the job done against Chicago. This is a straight down the middle, very even matchup. Wyatt, who do you got? Ooh, who do I have? You know, um, ooh, after hearing uh, the table, I'm probably going to have to go with the Bears. Although, I do feel like this game is probably as cut down the middle as it could possibly be. This is probably... One of the tightest games of this week, to say that to, to say for certain. All right, and Fitz, who do you got? I'm taking the Panthers. Uh, I don't think the Bears looked that good. They really, to me, on Thursday night, it was both two sluggish offenses looking off, like good, bad against good defenses. I mean, both the Bucks defense and the Bears defense is good, but I thought Nick Foles looked like garbage, really. I thought I do what I really love for the Bears offense. What I love to see is Jimmy Graham knocking off the rust. There's been like three or four years with Jimmy Graham. It, it looks like he, back to all pro status. They're just lining him up against a corner and saying, let's throw a fade. This guy's going to dominate. Nick him. Foles has always done well with good tight ends. Exactly. And even Mitch Trubisky was good with, with 
Graham. So I think Graham found a really good spot with the Bears, but I think the this is going to be a shootout. I think the Panthers are going to get it done. Robbie Anderson's been locked in with Bridgewater. He's been certified the, always Robbie Anderson. Yeah, guy. literally been a top five receiver this year, like locked in every week. Had 100 yards last week again. Mike Davis has been premier in filling in for Christian McCaffrey. They're on a three-game win streak. They're going to keep rolling. I think they're going to keep it going. The Panthers get it going and get it going good. And it looks like Cole is going to take the Bears. And in his little statement, he's put, sorry, Bogwater. You know, if he was here, he would. He would, he would, he would be. Yeah. He'd be whole. He'd be whole ass listing. He'd be reasons. preaching. Yeah. He'd be preaching about how sorry he was for for Bridgewater for for Teddy Bogwater. Coming up next, we have the New York Jets. Levy on Bellis, New York Jets. It's not like they used him in the first place. He was injured, mm-hmm. and I mean, I looked at the stats. He hasn't really looked good in the Jets uniform in general. But Fitz, I want you to take this one away first. I'll be honest. I've watched since we faced the Jets, and Le'Veon was back. It was his first game back. I thought Frank Gore looked better against us than he did than Le'Veon did. I think it's good that Adam Gase got rid of him. They were paying him too much. I have a lock here on the Dolphins. I think the Dolphins kicked their ass. Fitzmagic's coming off a big week against the Niners. He's been competitive every single game. I think Fitzmagic throws five TDs. We're looking for that 400-yard passing week, and it's happening finally. I'm thinking five TDs, and Adam Gase is getting fired. We're keeping that coach chain of firing going. Uh, I like the Dolphins a lot. I like Gaskins. I think he's played extremely well. I liked well. him in college. Yeah, everybody liked him in college. He's kind of, He was buried under the depth chart a lot there for the past few years. Canyon got traded. Other people left. And now he's kind of being the premier dude. I kind of like that, and I think the Dolphins are going to get it back. Wyatt, what do you got? Oh, 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 this magic. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know, better believe it's not so. But it is. Uh, Dolphins going to win. Going to beat the Jets this week. And that's about that. That's a wrap. Cam, what do you got? don't want to choose the Dolphins, but I'm choosing the Dolphins this week. Colge is also going to take the Dolphins, and he said, Jets suck. And I'm going to echo something before I let out my pick here. I went on a fucking tangent one week about how bad the Jets suck, and they do. Sam Darnold's not a good quarterback. He's not an average quarterback. He's fucking bad. If the Jets have no one pick, they should fucking take Trevor Lawrence. That's fucking it. That's fucking it. That's it. I'm taking the Dolphins, and that is going to be a star frame. Oh, and by the way, also, I didn't get the chance to say it. I feel it. bad for Sam Darnold. I believe Sam that's a $5 Donald. charity of I, your choice. I just yep. feel so bad for my man because literally he's got no supporting cast around him, no run game, no receivers, no, no offensive But he's line. also bad. And but, then Trevor Lawrence, he's going to run into the same thing, the same issue. I and think he's just gonna Lawrence have to has better around. mechanical issues. He, I mean, mechan- he's, he's just, just gonna better quarterback. He's going to have to run more. It's going to be the next, next Lamar. Here's my thing is... Arizona's defense is not good. We play so far off, and Flacco had 200 yards, and 118 of them were to Jamison Crowder through the whole game. So if Flacco can only get 200 yards against our defense, yeah, he probably has a shitty supporting cast. But I, I also think you can't give a guy three years and have him not progress. He's got to take steps to progress no matter who's around him. I mean, so I do at... think Lawrence is going to be the guy there for the Jets. And I think the Colts actually did throw a loss to the Jets this season just so they could not have a chance at Trevor Lawrence. Because I think there is going to – I think there might be a chance – an 0-16 – a couple 0-16 teams. A couple, huh? Yeah. Well, one thing I want to – I don't think there's going to be a couple 0-16. I think it's going to be Jets the Jets and the Falcons. I think there's going to be one, maybe I don't two think there the will be. I don't think there will be a single 0-16 team this year. I right. think there will be. There's gonna be a, there's gonna be at least one. I think two. I don't think this, that's two at the most. That's a bold prediction. Yeah, there's only been two in history. I think there's gonna be two this year. I'm gonna say there's gonna be zero. But one thing I did fail to mention as well is I do have it as a lock of the week. 
I did have it written down, just you know, as proof. The Dolphins. Yeah, I did. I did also lock the Dolphins, and I had the same theory as you. I never thought I, I'm never gonna lock the Dolphins again, probably. Yeah. So you know, it's like I might as well do it now. Mm-hmm. And this is a battle between Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, and this is always a great matchup. And you know, obviously, Tom Brady's in a different uniform. Cam, what do you got? Bucks, Packers. You know, this game is going to be a battle. That's all I can say. It is going to be a battle in the trenches, for sure. The run game is going to be there. The throwing game is going to be there. Tom Brady is probably going to think it's fifth down again. But, you know, it's going to be there. It's going to be a great game. Um, I have faith in it, but at the same time, I don't. I don't. And I don't know if Godwin's going to play this and week. It's, it's like... This is a really tough choice for me to choose because I really like the Packers and how they're rolling. They're rolling nice. But then Rogers again, the Bucks, nice. Buccaneers, they're rolling really good, but at the same time, the games they're losing are always close. All their games have been close games pretty much, besides like one. So I'm going to have to go with the Packers on this one. All right, Wyatt, what do you got? Ooh, uh, uh, well, everybody knows uh, Brady did not play good against the... Chicago Bears. It was a uh, not a good standing. Uh, I think you should start every game on new though. Uh, it is smart to go off last week's performance, but every game is a new. I would say that uh, it it would likely come into like I I'd say like seventy percent of me is saying that. It's Green Bay, but thirty percent says it's the Buccaneers, and I think the Buccaneers are gonna keep it. I think they're going to get a win. I think they're going to bounce back from that loss. And I think it's going to be a dog-ass fucking trash-ass game. And if they do lose, it's going to be because of Crosby. And not because of Joe. Not because of Rodgers. I'm very excited, Fitz, for these 1 o'clock games from when I'm at your house watching these games. But Fitz, who do you got? This one's tough. I have the Packers circle, but I'm back and forth on this one because I think this one's going to be extremely close. The Bucks' offense is good. They did stall out against the Bears, but I think that's because the Bears have a premier pass rusher in Khalil Mack. He was the one that was wrecking Brady's whole game plan with the rookie he, right he tackle. Out there. When Brady saw his right tackle, you got a get, right. You got a rookie yeah. guy. Christian yeah. Wirfs got ate alive. Yeah, when he saw his right that's tackle, that's a welcome just, to NFL moment. Exactly. Yeah, but when he got thrown around like a rag doll, you see Brady's eye go like. And I think Fuck. that is what the difference of this game is for me. I like Preston Smith and Zendaria Smith, but I don't think they're game wreckers. And I think I see something in Shaquille Barrett every week. The way he comes off the ball, the way he gets around the, every tackle all the time. I think he's going to get a strip sack. I think it's going to have two sacks and one's going to be a strip sack. And it's going to be the costly turnover for the Packers in this barn burner game. I think the Bucks win 35-31. So you're going to take Tampa. I am. So Larry decides to go with Tampa. Colge goes with Green Bay and he says, I have a feeling here. Trust me. So you know what? I can't go against the man. If he's going to if he's going to tell me he has a feeling and he's telling me to trust him, I mean, I can't I can't just not trust a man. I mean, that's Exactly. That's, that's my lifelong friend, so I'm going to have to take Green Bay as well. I'm taking Green Bay. It's going to be, you know, I mean, when Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady face off, I mean, it's always... It's going to be a barn burning either way. I yeah. mean, now is it true, sorry to interject here, but is it true Bryce is really predicting two teams to go 0-6? 16? 0-16? Yeah. Is that what you're predicting? I think so. Who, the I, Jets and the Giants? No, I think it's going to be the Jets and... Falcons. The Falcons. That would be wild if the Falcons got that thing. But I just think this game, like you said, it's two all pro QBs. They're they're obviously going to go at it. I think the the Bucks defense has always has been number one run defense for like the past since last year going on to now. Two years. Yeah, for two years now. Two years now. Yeah, so it's I just think they're going to shut down Aaron Jones. It's going to be forced to be Rodgers throwing the whole time, and I think that's what gives Shaquille Barrett. Those sacks gives Shaquille Barrett that force fumble. That's going to be costly, and the Bucks are going to get this done. All right. Well, coming up next, obviously, obviously, even though Colton's in the studio, 
Colge has you. With some serenation. Colge sent us a voice message. You know, Larry being the unprofessional he is, he told me to scroll up and just use the one from last week, but Colge came through in five seconds as soon as I sent the message. Well, mm. I know, that's true, but you know, if he was busy, I didn't <laughs> want to bother him, so I, I'm i his agent, so yeah. as for my talent relations, if he's working or busy for, you know, the COVID reserve list, um... I, I just figured it would be best for my talent. Now, now if Colge... I will be shook if Colge's best Sunday night is when he has COVID. Or possibly has COVID. Well, he's filling in for somebody with COVID. Yeah, 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 I know. He is on the front lines. COVID-related yeah. filling in. issues. Yeah, COVID, exactly, COVID-related issues. Anyway, for the Sunday night game, here is Colge with his Sunday night performance. Probably should fucking have my volume on. That's probably fucking step number one. Rookie mistake. What is this, the Rams and the Niners we're doing here? Yeah, yeah for Sunday night. All right, here is Colge's reminiscence of Sunday night. Sunday night! And you know, pound for yeah, pound. I thought that one was probably the best one of the season. <laughs> and you know, week six, Colge. Wow. One, one more time. It was pretty You can come on repeat here. Sunday night! There you go, Colge. You hit the peak. He I hit. think that was the one. You know, and yeah, you know, I'm proud. I, I'm very happy. You hit it, it sound bit now. I am very happy with with how that came out. But anyway, we do have a NFC West matchup between the Rams and the Niners, and I'm going to take the Rams to absolutely smoke the 49ers. If the Dolphins weren't playing the Jets this week, I was going to lock the Rams. But I'm just going to take the Rams. Wyatt, who do you got? I also have the Rams. I think the Rams are going to do exactly what Trevin said. Let's go, Trevin. Let's go, Rams. Fitz. Unless it's me against Trevin, in which case, fuck Trevin. It's the most times I've been called Trevin in a YouTube video. Fitz, who do you got? Uh, I'm taking the Rams. I think they're going to. I agree with Tree, but I think it's going to be an ass kick. Uh, Jimmy G looked off. If that's who's going to be the starter this week, I don't know. They seem to be okay with benching him and going with Beathard or however that works. But whoever starts, however that goes, they're off. They're going to throw. They threw picks that were just completely awful last week. The Rams are going to capitalize on that on defense. This run game, Whitworth, everybody's got it dogged out. I could see, I mean, Le'Veon potentially could fit into the Rams' offense. Anything could happen within this week. Le'Veon's a good free agent for anyone who's struggling with the backfield. But I think the Rams are just going to kill him. Cooper Cup and Robert Words are both going to have 120 yards plus and a touchdown piece. Cam, okay, who do you got in this one? Definitely going to have to go with the Rams this one. The 49ers are just not looking so good this year as they were last year in the Super Bowl. So, easy for me, Rams. All right, and Colch is also going to take the Rams for a star, star frame. frame. Star Five frame. to charity of your choice, folks. A star Five frame. Five dollar charities. Star frame on Sunday night, and that is four star choice. frames so far in four. this game. That's kind of light that for this week, so that's pretty good. That's wild. That is wild. But it we're might gonna, be... We're gonna... I think we're gonna work into one right here. I'm pretty sure. I know. I think. I think so too. I was, just, I was just taking a peek at this matchup. Um, we got two Monday night games instead of a Thursday night game this week, and if I had to pick between a format, I just want to kind of survey the room here before we get into this game. If I had to, if you guys had a choice between one Thursday night game or two Monday night games, what would you choose? Because I would personally choose. Two Monday night games. Give me like how it is week one of the season. Give me that late night Monday yeah, like, night like game. Yeah, like a four o'clock start to seven, and then like a seven to ten thirty. Yeah, give me that late start Monday night game. I'll go around the corners. Why? What would what would you prefer? I prefer two Monday night games. Why? What do you? I like? would personally prefer a Thursday night game. And to be honest, I would rather it be a Thursday night game and a Saturday night game, and there to be no Monday night game. Uh, that's what I would prefer. All right. But that's just me. Fuck a Monday night game. Cam, what would you, what would you prefer between the uh, Thursday night game or two Monday night games? I definitely have two Monday night games. I think I think that's just the uh, the best case scenario. Fitz, what about you? 
Uh, I just think that the Chiefs were going to get it done. No, well, no, no. Oh, wait, what? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, he just he distracted me with some dumb video about Aaron <laughs> Donald talking about. Yeah, okay, yeah. before we even okay. introduce the matchup here. But what are we talking about? Would you rather have a Thursday night game or two Monday no, night No, I'd rather games? have two Monday night over Thursday just because, I don't know, I like that kind of the same thing, the feel, the 4 o'clock to 7 to like 7 to 10. That would be better. Thursday night, it just feel like it's off. It makes people have the short week. I yeah. think they should just drop it. Let everybody have either long week for one, and then be good with it. Yeah, I like it as well. So since uh, since we already got on the board here, we got the Chiefs and the yeah. Bills. Larry, why don't you explain where you're going? Well, I'm going to the Chiefs, clearly. Cameron distracted me with an Aaron Donald video of <laughs> him talking about how strong Alex Smith's leg was because he tested his, put his whole weight on Alex Smith. But anyway, uh, I think the Chiefs are just going to get it done. Uh, obviously, it was a barn burner against the Raiders, but uh, I just don't think the Bills looked lethargic against the Titans. I think the Bills are going to struggle to come out against the Chiefs. Even if they do get the lead, uh, it's... Mahomes is going to battle back and win it. It could be a barn burner. I know John Brown's missing. Cole Beasley looked good for the Bills tonight. They have no run game. I'd also like to see like a Le'Veon Bell get signed to the Bills because I think that could be big for them. But I just think right now the Chiefs are locked for the win. All right, Cam, what do you got? You know, I'm going to have to go with KC of this one. I really want to choose the Bills because I feel like the Bills is another team that I could get. Casey and run for their money and give them another loss. But with all the losses the Bills have had recently with the players and everything, I'm just going to have to go with Casey. Colge is also going to go with the Chiefs over the Bills. Wyatt, who do you got? Going, oh, oh, go to the Chiefs. You know, I think the Bills this week. Really bounce back. I think Devin Singletary looks good. I think Stephon Diggs looks good. And I think they they show why they were a winning team. And Josh Allen plays extremely well. Well, that being said, they still lose 31-7. to So that is also a star frame. Five dollars a charity of your choice. The Chiefs are too much. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I was the only one. Yeah, he, hits, he hits the hand. And the, I'm like, I got it. Forgot. But that's all right. You know, I I had to I had to you know, never say it. I had to do it for the boys. You know, I had to I had to hype it up if nobody else. Is There's always it, so. Colton and Trevor that do it. Yeah, you know. I try. Bryce, Bryce throws it in the quiet one. I'm just like. It's kind of disoulless without Colton. But I tell you what. Yeah, Colge Colge missing without the star frame. Colge, if you're watching. Fuck you. And we miss you. <laughs> Coming up next, we got that second Monday night game of the week. We got the cards. We got the Cowboys. Who better to start that off with than Larry Fitzgerald? Cold who you got? I mean Fitz, who you got? Sorry. Well, I can't. I don't know who Cold just got in this one, unfortunately. <laughs> but I'll tell you who I got. I'm taking the Red Rifle in the upset of the week. Easy, don't. I think the Cowboys get it done. I think. I just think our defense is a shell. We just play too soft. Our corners play off the receivers. These receivers are really good. If we're going to play off against Dallas, oh, Dallas. Oh, where Andy Dalton went was the Cowboys? Yep, yeah. and Dallas is going to eat us up if if we play off like we always do, which we're going to continue to do. I also think Ziggy is going to eat us alive on the ground because I don't know if our run defense is that good. Chandler just tore his bicep. He's out for the season. So I hope Gardak fills in and does well in the pass rush, but I... I think Andy Dalton is going to get it done just because of the pure fact of how soft our corners play off receivers. All right, and uh, unfortunately this week, um, Colge must have forgot that there were two Monday night games because Colge did not Pick the send, Cow- send in a pick for the Cowboys and the Cardinals, so we are going to have to remind him to pick that game. But I'm going to have to choose the Cardinals, man. Maybe we should call him impromptuly. Well, he's at work, so he's gonna be Ooh, yeah. he's gonna be working right now. So I'm gonna take the uh, I'm gonna take the Cardinals, man. The Cardinals have done me dirty every time I've picked them, even when Fitz, you know, advises me not to. 
but I'm going to do this off of my own choice. This is my own choice, and I'm going to take the Cardinals to win this one. Wyatt, who do you got? Ooh. Uh, you know, it's tough. Uh, I probably I probably will end up going for the Cardinals for no, no real particular reason. Uh, I'm just not a big Dallas Cowboys fan. I think they're a fluke. Uh, I don't think they're that great. I think they're overhyped. And I think the Cardinals are going to get gonna beat them in a dog-ass game. It's going to be a hard win one game, but I think Cardinals are going to win. Get it done. All right, and Cam closes off. I'm going to have to choose <coughs> the Cowboys. They're just... With the the Cardinals re- losing Chandler Jones and them playing weak weak DBs, I'm just I'm not really liking their defense. And God, the Cowboys are going to eat that up. So <coughs> I'm going to go with the Cowboys on that one. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and Colts with a quick reply it must not be working very hard. Is <laughs> is going to be taking. The Dallas Cowboys. Ooh. With Andy, the Red Rifle. The Red Rifle gets it 3-2. Red, Red, Red Rifle. Wow. Red Rifle. Tree might make up some points this week with the Cardinals in the upset. Unfortunately, I didn't think it would be a 3-2 to two split. I thought I'd be 1-1 one, well, one against the world. Up, it's not an upset, just a regular pick. Yeah. You would used as upset. I know, but that's 1 against the world I thought I'd be but with Andy Dalton. But apparently people love him. His red rock. Today, sir. I could see him going for 450 yards. <laughs> AJ Green, have you, did you see that? There's a video of AJ Green where Joe Burrow throws a really bad pass and it's picked off, and he like looks at the ball, doesn't even try to jump for it, and then he like acts like he's trying to tackle the guy, but he turns and like acts for the lead blocker and starts lead blocking for him. It's so funny. He doesn't even try. AJ Green's gone after this. Oh yeah, he's 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 he's, he's leaving. He's out of there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to conclude our week number six picks, locks, and upsets. This is a record-setting low for this season of Star Frames. Only five were registered this week. The previous low was six, so that brings our total to only 36 Star Frames on the still season. still an average of six through six that's weeks. That's not bad, really. That's a I'll lot still. Yeah, six Star Frames through six weeks. That is insane. Cam, you got any final words before you leave? No. Well, all right. Not today. <laughs> Why? You got any final words? Ooh. All right, this one's going to be good. All right. So, uh, if you ever get nerds rope, like, this is going to blow your mind. It's just licorice with nerds on it. Like, you can, get, you can buy those written separately and save a whole shitload. I think a lot of people are going to use that as oh, rec- this. recommendation for their life. Red licorice, get get nerds, and then you don't even have to. Then you don't even have to get nerds rope. That's fucking saving a lot of people. And then, and then you can get twenty five cents, laffy taffy, get the blue raspberry kind, and then uh, yeah, that's our that's the Liberty Mart life right there. Yeah, we're not even Liberty Mart though. It's only local. Well, we're living life local. Fitz, any last words of the night? Have a beautiful rest of the week. We'll see you next week when I make up some points on Cameron and continue my dominance of absolute... Of second place? No, I've been absolutely wonderful all through all these picks. Not so as I, wonderful as you, me. You know, just because I had a few off weeks doesn't mean we're going to come not make up some points. We haven't been as wonderful so, as me, so, so if you're going to be there. first place, but not 10 you. points behind. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for week six picks, locks, and upsets of the week. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section down below. Don't forget you can check all the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at True Talks. Follow me on Twitter at True Talks. Follow me on Instagram. At Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, don't forget, you can hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. Ain't nobody out working me. Those are just straight facts. I totally fucked that up because I got distracted at Cameron slapping Fitz's belly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, you guys have a great rest of your day.